It was a cold late January evening in 2021, and I, along with three childhood friends, Henry, James, and Sophia, gathered the courage to explore an old abandoned asylum not far from the city center. Upon reaching the outside of the asylum, we couldn't figure out how to enter as all the doors were boarded up and there seemed to be no clear entrance. After several attempts, we found an area where the wall had collapsed, allowing us to enter. Once inside, we lit our flashlights, revealing a chaotic scene. Dust and cobwebs were everywhere, old documents scattered on the floor, typical of an abandoned place. The atmosphere was incredibly eerie. Unaware of what would unfold, we decided to head towards the corridors to explore the various rooms. As we walked, I noticed footprints on the floor suggesting someone had been there recently. The asylum had four floors, so we decided to split up. I went with Henry, and James went with Sophia. They would inspect the first and second floors, while Henry and I would explore the remaining two. As we reached the third floor, we began inspecting the first few rooms, but found nothing of interest. Henry, a few steps ahead of me, was near the end of the corridor where the last room awaited. When I opened the door, I saw Henry go pale. He rushed towards me, expressing a strong desire to leave. I asked him what he had seen, but he kept repeating that he wanted to get out. I managed to calm him down and convinced him to return to that room. Upon entering, I saw an almost half-open coffin. It was evident that someone had recently opened it, as fresh footprints on the dusty lid indicated its recent disturbance. I immediately connected this to the footsteps I had seen on the floor earlier. Someone had been there recently. We decided to skip the last floor and descended to the lower levels to reunite with our friends. As we descended to the second floor, a deafening scream echoed from the third floor. I believe it originated from the room where we had seen the coffin just a short while ago. We hurriedly descended the stairs as the scream continued to resonate through the desolate corridors. The terror escalated as we reached the second floor and finally met Sophia and James. Did you hear that scream? I asked. Sophia and James nervously nodded, asking what had happened. We explained what we had witnessed, the freshly disturbed coffin lid covered in dust, confirming recent activity. Suddenly, silence. That scream seemed to have dissolved into the atmosphere. Anxiety lessened as we understood that something was amiss on the third floor, not where we currently stood. We decided to further explore the second floor, this time together, avoiding any thoughts of the unsettling event on the floor above. The second floor was in even worse condition than the upper ones, with peeling walls and an unbearable musty odor. As we ventured through the corridors, I noticed a slightly open door leading to a room with a faded sign. Above the door was a plaque reading therapy room. We hesitated, but curiosity got the better of us, and we entered. The room was pitch black, with no windows, illuminated only by our flashlights. The walls were entirely covered in white tiles, and in the far right corner there were old, mostly rusted white beds and various outdated and surely non-functional medical equipment. On an old shelf, I noticed yellowed sheets of paper. I picked them up and started reading. They were dated logs from the 1970s, containing details about therapies and patients who had been in the asylum. Suddenly, we heard another noise, seemingly coming from the third floor. It was the sound of footsteps approaching us, followed by someone coughing. We immediately exited the room and started running towards the exit. We reached the point where we had entered, where the wall had collapsed and finally, we escaped from that place. That night in the abandoned asylum was an overwhelming yet unsettling experience. As we were driving back home, we reflected on what had happened, aware that we were fortunate to come out unharmed. Anything could have happened inside. There had been rumors for years about strange events in that place, but curiosity drove us to personally verify the extent of those stories. I don't regret the experience, but it's certainly something I will never do again. It was the summer of 2019 and I was 16 years old. 
During that time, my friends and I had the habit of staying out very late at night. It was around 2 a.m., and we decided that it was time to head home. All of my friends lived on the other side of town except for one, so I walked with my friend who lived near my house. As we walked, we found ourselves in an area where there was an old factory, closed for years. My friend asked me if I ever had the courage to go inside. Honestly, I didn't have the courage, but not wanting to appear weak, I said, sure, why not? Good, he said, let's go in. I won't deny it, I was overwhelmed by anxiety. Once inside, the darkness was oppressive. The only glow came from the moon through dirty windows and the light from our cell phone torches. The place seemed frozen in time. The factory had been closed since the 1940s. There were dozens of rusted machines and hanging electrical wires. Dust was everywhere, and the floor was covered in mud, making it very slippery. Suddenly, in the darkness, I saw a shadow. It was a motionless man in the center of the factory, seemingly staring at me with a penetrating gaze. From a distance near his face, I could see a light illuminating. I believe he was smoking a cigarette. I was petrified, and so was my friend. We decided to get out of there as quickly as possible. As we headed towards the exit, our pace kept increasing. My heart was pounding. Once outside the factory, my friend and I, at some point, had to take different paths to get home. We were frightened, quickly said our goodbyes, and each headed towards our own homes. After about 10 minutes, I finally arrived home. As soon as I entered, I locked myself in my room, reflecting on what I had seen earlier and wondering if it was a product of my imagination. I couldn't believe it. After about 40 minutes, suddenly, the doorbell started ringing once, then twice, then three times. I wondered who could be ringing the bell at that time of night. My parents woke up, and my father went to the door. I told him not to open it, that I needed to tell him something that had happened to me earlier. But my father, with a bit of fear, opened the door anyway. There was no one outside. Who had rung the doorbell in the middle of the night? It remained a mystery, but I always thought it had something to do with the man in the factory. After that evening, neither my friend nor I ever saw that man again. The episode from that night still lives within me after five years. I don't think about it as often anymore, but even today when I talk about it, I still get chills. That day was my 19th birthday, and I had spent the evening at home with some friends. At the end of the night, around 11 p.m., we decided to hit the streets to spend some time together, with the intention of exploring an old abandoned house that had been empty for many years. We had wanted to enter for a while, but fear had always stopped us. However, that night was different. That night, we decided we would go in. As we approached the house, we immediately felt a sense of unease, compounded by the poor surrounding lighting. We tried to enter through the main door, but it was locked. We tried several times, but there was no way to open it. So we decided to enter through the back door. It was a very sturdy door, but despite this, it offered no resistance, and we managed to open it without much difficulty. To light up the place, we had brought some torches we decided to start exploring from the ground floor. The anxiety of what we might find accompanied us with every step we took. On the ground floor, we found only some items on the floor and a lot of dirt. Not finding anything interesting, we decided to inspect the first floor. So we approached the stairs to go upstairs, and as soon as I stepped on the first step, the first four steps collapsed. Initially, we tried to justify it by saying that the place was old abandoned, and the staircase was probably weak. But then, reasoning it out, I was very thin and I barely put any weight on the step. We interpreted it as if the place did not welcome our presence. This scared us, so we decided to leave the house. The next day, I decided to share the whole experience with my father. He told me that there were rumors about the place, that it belonged to a man who had lived there alone decades before and had always been very possessive of the place to the point of not letting anyone in. That explained everything, I thought. The spirit of that man still lived in that house and continued to hinder anyone who wanted to set foot in that place. From that moment, I swore to myself that I would never enter there again. 
Before that, I didn't believe in these things, but after this experience, if I ever decide to explore abandoned places, I will first research the history of that place and what made it an abandoned location. You never know. It's better not to take risks. These things are not to be taken lightly. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found the content interesting. If so, please leave a like and share your thoughts in the comments below. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel to stay updated on upcoming content. Greetings, and see you in the next video.